see the green. Okay, now we got All right, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to uh, Butt Now Fellowship. Thank God for all of you that are here. Uh, thank God for uh, life, health, and strength. Uh, we just want to uh, appreciate you guys for coming out tonight. Thought it not robbery to be here with us. Those uh, of you who are tuning in online, we thank God for all of you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue our study, uh, verse by verse study through the book of Philippians. Okay, go ahead and turn with me to the book of Philippians. And uh, we'll finish up our study here. Uh, as we've been going through this study, it's been a good study uh, as Paul is dealing with uh, uh, those believers here and how we ought not to be complacent uh, in our walk and how we ought to uh, continue to have the mind of Christ uh, so that we may uh, 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 do the things that God would have us to do. All right, Paul then, uh, uh, chapter 3, is dealing with uh, how we are as far as our zeal. Okay, and Paul uh, being a a, a, a Pharisee of the Pharisee and being uh, all of these things that he was, he didn't count any or put any confidence in his flesh, okay? A lot of times we put a lot of confidence in who we think we are, all right? Uh, especially in the church today, in Christendom, uh, a lot of times the pastors and these uh, particular people, uh, they put so much uh, separation between the pastor and the people as though the pastor is so much better than everybody else, okay? Uh, but that's not the case, all right? They, uh, the pastor is just is a human being and, and, and uh, uh, has the ability to sin just like anybody else, okay? There's nothing special about a pastor other than having the, a desire to teach God's word, okay? Uh, doesn't make you any less uh, of, of a, uh, or any uh, uh, far further from Christ than the pastor because you don't pastor a church, okay? So that's what Paul is saying. Paul says, put no confidence in the flesh. It right? doesn't matter who you think you are in your flesh. Uh, what matters is who we are in Christ, okay? Uh, uh, and as members of the body of Christ, this is the mindset that we ought to have, okay? Uh, we're dealing with these couple of verses here, uh, starting with Philippians 3, and look at verse 13. Coming on down, we discuss these verses, uh, 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 and Paul is talking about verse 13. He says, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended. Okay, Paul is saved. He's talking to people who are saved, uh, but he's talking as though, uh, 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 he, and he's really dealing with complacency. A lot of times we get complacent. We don't pray. Uh, we don't study the Bible like we should, uh, and we get complacent in our walk with Christ. But understand, uh, this is an this is a day, an everyday journey. Okay, uh, it doesn't mean we're going to always do everything right. All right, it doesn't mean we're going to always do uh, uh, what we're supposed to do. But the desire, okay. Uh, and the uh, this, the more we study, the more we pray to God, the more our inner man is being renewed day by day. All right, and so the more our inner man is being renewed, our mind is being renewed, and then we therefore change our behavior. So it's a constant journey and a walk. Okay, uh, Paul says in verse thirteen of Philippians three, I count not myself to have, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. All right, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. All right, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in who? Which is in Christ Jesus, okay? So we're pressing toward the mark, and the mark is not the, uh, the mark should not be the president of the company, uh, the, 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 your supervisor. The mark should always be Christ, okay? That's what we're pressing toward. We're not pressing toward getting a bigger house, bigger car, not, we're not pressing toward those things. If you have money to get those things, then God bless you. You can get those things if you can afford it. But that's not that should not be our focus. Our focus should be on pressing toward the prize or the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is found in Christ Jesus. Okay, All right? our walk should not be determined based on how much money I make. All right? Our walk should not be determined based on who I'm with. All right, our walk should be determined simply because of who we are in Christ. All right, and that's what Paul is dealing with there, and we 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 discuss those things there. Verse, look at verse fifteen. This is where we left off, so this is what we're going to pick up. He says, "Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if any good, and if, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this, even this unto you." Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness. Uh, we thank you for your truth. We thank you for your, your understanding. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for salvation as a present possession. Uh, Father God, we thank you now for your grace, uh, which is sufficient in all that we go through. Father God, before we can ask you of anything, we just have to give you thanks. And we thank you now. We actually uh, bless those who are listening tonight. 
uh, uh, those here physically and those by, uh, by way of internet. Uh, we actually help the, uh, uh, touch the minds tonight uh, that your word may be edification uh, so that we may continue to build up our inner man as we walk according to your will in this lost and dying world. Uh, help us to be ambassadors of Christ, to speak on your behalf. Uh, help us to walk, uh, live a life that's pleasing unto you. Uh, faith is the only thing that pleases God, and faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, Father God, we ask that you continue to bless those who are sick and dealing with issues, uh, those of who, who we have mentioned before. We ask you to strengthen them right now, comfort them, O oh God. Uh, those who are uh, going through uh, hard times, O oh God, we ask you to comfort them now with your grace. Uh, for you said in your word that uh, your peace shall surpass all understanding and shall keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, help us to set our affections on things above and not the things on this earth. Uh, help us to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Uh, but help us to be content in whatever situation we find ourselves in. Uh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, right. Lord, for 33 years of marital bliss. <laughs> oh, it's an anniversary. Okay, congratulations. Yeah, 33 years. Congratulations. Man, that is a blessing. Yeah, that is a blessing. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. 33 years. That's a, that's almost as long as I've been born. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, but that's a blessing. Uh, that is a blessing to uh, be together for that long. Uh, I thank you guys for coming be with us tonight uh, on your anniversary night. Uh, but yeah, that is truly a blessing. I'm uh, glad we're. I'm thankful that we walk in the same direction. Right, right, right. Uh, and that's always a plus uh, when you deal with marriage. From a just from a natural perspective, if you're on two different uh, uh, wavelengths as far as uh, understanding and direction, just naturally speaking, it's hard. That's not our argument. Right, right. <laughs> they argue about others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but to be on the same page spiritually uh, uh, is a wonderful thing, uh, because if one person gets out of line, the other person can uh, 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 steer everything back in the right direction. Uh, so that's always a blessing. Uh, uh, and uh, obviously, being together that long, there are going to be disagreements. Uh, but uh, but again, if both people have the mind of Christ, all right, that, that even in, even in disagreements and arguments, uh, everybody still can come back to the same common goal, which is which is key. Uh, uh, so, uh, but yeah, we thank God for that. Uh, uh, any tips? Uh, any tips? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but but that but that's good. That's good. Uh, and again, I appreciate you all uh, for coming to be with us tonight. Today, what we kind of real is that the that the main key is that you just want to be loved. Right, right. Just keep that in mind, both yeah. people. They right. just want to be loved. Right, right. Yeah, love and, and, and companionship. As long as you don't get the car together, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said, if I drove the first date, I, we, we wouldn't have had a second date. And I said, look, she told you drive just like I did. What are you talking about? And she does. <laughs> <laughs> but she's in control. Man. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I don't really, I don't like to ride with anybody myself. I have to be the one driving. Uh, I feel safer if I'm behind the wheel. Yeah. Uh, Is this but, word perfect again? Yeah, but well said. So yeah, let's get back into it. Uh, again, thank you all for that. Uh, look at verse 15. Let us what? Therefore. therefore. Now, what does it mean when we say therefore? Also. Huh? Including. Right, including. All right, so therefore, because of all the things that he mentioned before, he's saying therefore. So it refers back to what he's talking about in verses 12, 13, 14, all the way down. That's why I wanted to read from 13 and 14. So he says, let us therefore, as many as be what? Perfect. Perfect. So what is he talking about? Okay, so what, what were we talking about? Mature. What does perfect mean? Mature, complete. Mature, complete, okay? So that, that's what he's talking about. Now, perfect does not mean you do everything right, okay? Perfect means mature, because the more mature we become after being complete in Christ, all right, the more our mind becomes renewed, okay? All right, Romans 12 and 2, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. So the more we become renewed, the more we become more mature in our walk with Christ, all right? The less things that bother, the less the things that used to bother us shouldn't bother us. Uh, 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 not that it won't bother you, but you should not be as agitated about it, okay? Simply because of the new mindset that you have. 
All right, the people that used to aggravate you and get on your nerves, they shouldn't be, uh, it should be less likely for them to get to you now because you have matured in Christ. All right, uh, remember now, a lot of times when you look at Christians, okay, quote unquote, are the, some of the, 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 the worst people you'll ever meet because most Christians, they go to church religiously, but they don't learn anything scripturally. And because they don't learn anything scripturally, there's no real change of what? Mind. When there's no real change of mind, there's no change in behavior. So you'll act the way you've always acted. Just because you go in church doesn't mean anything. Because really, the church is not the four walls of the building. The church is who? Yeah. The church is us, right? We are the church, all right? <laughs> and so just because you go in a church does not mean you're of the church, which is his body, the body of Christ. All right, and so what happens is when we deal with this, Paul is saying as many as be what? Perfect. So in order to be as many as be perfect, we have to be what? Thus what? Thus minded, which takes us back to Philippians 2, 5, verse 5, where Paul says, let us have the what? Mind of who? The mind of Christ. All right? If I have the mind of Christ, then it's no longer me, but it's what? Christ. Christ is our head. We are his body carrying out his instructions. All right. And that's how we ought to look at it. OK. Uh, uh, now, those that are perfect here, he's talking about those who have the mind of Christ. Now, look at this. And if anything, ye be otherwise, what? Minded. Minded. What is he saying? Off the wall stuff that don't matter. Or, or minding what? Earthly things. But yeah. Go down, drop down to verse 19. Yeah. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. And whose glory is in their shame, who mind what? Earthly, Earthly things. Right? Right? A lot of times we get, and I'm not telling you to be totally oblivious to what's going on around you. Uh, have, be aware. But what I'm saying is most people are mind, so mindful of earthly things, all right, to their no spiritual good to anybody. All right? Because what controls them and what consumes them are things that are on the earth. That's why Colossians 3 1 says to set your affections what above and not what on things in the earth. All right, Paul says in First Timothy, he says that uh, 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 let us not uh, 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 war and entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. All right, and to entangle means to really get caught up. All right, so a lot of times we get so caught up in what's going on in this earthly realm that we forget, all right, who we are in Christ. Because who we are in Christ is more than conquerors, all right? But we forget that because we forget our position and who we are in Christ simply because of a circumstance or situation. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 tells us that we ought not to walk by sight, but we should be walked by what? Faith. You see that? Because if we walk by sight, we'll be up and down, up and down, up and down. Because it might go good here this day, it might go bad that day. So we'll be up and down. But we walk by what? Faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is just believing God at his word. So no matter what happens, that I understand, Romans 12, 9, that his grace is sufficient. Because whenever I'm weak, that's when he's what? Strong. Mm -hmm. You see that? And so looking at things in this earthly realm, all right, will make us feel as though we have no power and as though we're weak. But guess what? When we're at our weakest point, we're at the best point of our life as members of the body. Why? Because when we're weak, that's when what? Yeah, He's strong. It still boils down to happiness and joy. There you go, huh? Again, knowing what's happening is happiness, but joy. Right, right. Doesn't include what happened yesterday. Absolutely, absolutely. Because to be happy, you have to have something happening. Okay, joy, I, the joy of the Lord is our strength, which means that based on what's already, what he's already done to die for our sins, we can have joy in spite of what we may see or what's going on around us. You see that that's the difference that when something happens to us, when something happens to us that we don't want to happen to us, whatever that may be, we don't lose hope as though the, the man who does not have Christ does. All right, we may be upset about it. We may be uh, 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 angry about it, but, you know, be angry and sin not. But understand, we don't lose hope or joy simply because our hope and joy is not based on our circumstance. Our hope and joy is based on Christ. All right, because no matter what goes on in this life, I understand that the light afflictions that I face now 
cannot outweigh the glory in which I will receive when I get to heaven. All right. Look at uh, uh, look at this uh, verse fifteen here. And if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall do what? Huh? Reveal this even unto you, right? Now, God wants you to understand how to possess your vessel. All right? Whenever, when we study the Bible, uh, it tells us we put no confidence in the flesh, but it gives us a renewed and a changed mind on how we ought to live and we, how we walk every day. All right? Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians 4, look at verse 1. Look at this, First Thessalonians 4, look at verse 1. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to what? Walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. All right, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from what fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his what vessel and sanctification and honor. All right, we ought to know how to do this. The more we study, the more we have a, the mind of Christ, and the more we know how to handle our vessel, even as we walk uh, in this uh, lost and dying world. Right? Look at verse five. Not in the lust of con con concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God had not called us unto uncleanness, but unto what? Holiness. Holiness. Right? All right, so now, when we look at this, God wants us to know, uh, as we just saw in Philippians 3.15, that he will even reveal it unto us. He wants us to know and understand how we ought to possess our vessel, okay? And how do we do this? Let's go to 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. Look at 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for instruct, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be what? Perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. When, once we understand who we are in Christ, we understand that we put no confidence in the flesh. The more we study, the more our mind becomes renewed because we have the mind of Christ. And the life that we now live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God. All right? Once we know all of that, now we, be, we can become meat all right, or useful for the Master. All right? Look at uh, uh, 2 Timothy 2. Look at verse 20. Because understand, although we're saved, all right, we ought to, we ought to walk a certain way. We ought to live a certain lifestyle, all right, all right. And so once we do that, which means that a lot of times when things happen to us, all right, because of who we are in Christ, we should not feel uh, uh, as though we've lost it all or lost hope as others would feel, simply because we have the peace of God, all right. No matter what happens around us, look at this. Look at Second Timothy two. Look at verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of the earth, and some to honor and some to what? Dishonor. Dishonor. I go to this verse all the time when people say, well, how is it that you can be saved and you act like that? You know? So because most people think that your salvation is predicated upon what you do or don't do. If that's the case, nobody's going to heaven. I'm just telling you right now. If salvation is based upon what we can do or what we can refrain from doing, none of us will go. Because who is that holy enough to do everything perfectly in the sight of God? Not in the sight of me. You can fool people all day, okay? But who's holy enough or who can live a holy enough life in the sight of God to deserve salvation? And also, including your thoughts, how 
right? Even right, right? Because understand, a lot of times that's where the real battle is in the mind. You see that? That's why when Jesus came, He said, "Listen, your law says, all right, thou shalt not commit adultery." But I say, even if you look upon a woman and lust after her, you've committed the act. See, because most people say, well, if I didn't do it physically, then I'm okay. But Jesus came to fortify or to strengthen the law and say that, listen, even if you look and lust after a woman, which again, I wouldn't be able to tell if somebody does that, neither can you. Because that's a what? That's a mental battle. All right? And so understand that a lot of times when it comes to us, there are some people that are members of the body of Christ who will dishonor God in the way they live because they don't have enough strength, which comes from the word, in order to combat all right, the things of the flesh. Because remember, Galatians, Paul tells us there's a constant battle between the what? Flesh and the what? And the spirit. All right? That they cannot do the things that they would. Okay? There's a constant battle there. So if you feed one more than you feed the other, then it's going, the one that you feed the most is going to win. All right? If you never pray, never study, uh, never have any time with God, and you do everything all right, from a carnal mindset, then what do you think is going to take over? You see, that doesn't mean that you're not saved. Because once you accept that Christ has died for your sins, he shed his blood, uh, and his blood was payment for your sin. He was buried and rose again the third day. Once you believe that, you're saved eternally. Now the battle is the walk after being saved. All right, because our walk should exemplify or, 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 or should be a reflection of what we believe. You see that? And so that, that's the case, all right? Look at, uh, uh, look at verse 21 here. And notice in verse 20 it says, but in a great what? House. House. So the vessels, the, the vessels of honor and the vessels of dishonor are in the what? Same. The same house. It's, it's in the same body, all right? Some people... Uh, 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 abuse the grace of God or frustrate the grace of God and others don't. But both people, both members of the, of the same house need the same amount of grace. You see that? Look at verse 21. Now the first word is what? Yeah. If. Here comes it. Here comes it now. If a man therefore do what? Purge himself. Purge himself from these. Alright? So there's a work that is a personal work. Which means that it's a personal choice for me to purge myself from these things. All right? All right? From these. He shall be a what? Vessel unto what? Honor. Honor. Now, we just read in 1 Thessalonians how that we ought to handle this vessel. All right? And so now, it goes back to what Paul is saying in Philippians 2. When we put on the mind of Christ, we won't just go through life, but we'll grow through life. All right? Because some of us just go through life, right, with, 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 with not even, uh, 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 even touching the, uh, just a bit of what we could be capable of, both naturally and spiritually. Go ahead, Dennis. Um, does that mean that sanctification is on us? Huh? Does that mean, does that mean sanctification is on us? Right, the sanctification mm -hmm. part of it. Now, understand now. The only way he's going to do that is by studying. Right. Now, understand now, sanctification, there's a practical sanctification and a positional sanctification. Sanctification just means what? Set apart. Set apart for the, just set apart, right? So now, once we become saved, we become sanctified or set apart positionally because we're no longer in Adam, but we're in who? Christ. In Christ, okay? And Col Colossians 2.10 says that we're what? Complete in Christ. All right, so that is our positional standing in the sight of God. We're sanctified, which means we're set apart, okay? No longer in Adam, which is sinful, but we're in Christ, which is righteousness. All right, so now the practical sanctification is based on this verse and some verses like it to where we have to make a personal choice to do the right thing. Because remember now, God does not take away our free will just because he saves us. Because then we'll be robots. If he just made us do everything he wanted us to do, what would be the point? So if we make the wrong decision, then we're weak, then he is strong. Then he's strong. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And the practical sanctification, uh, uh, keep this, keep this, because I want to finish this, but based on what you just said, go to uh, 
Go to Colossians chapter 3. That kind of gets into where Paul says, I want to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get back to the end of that one. That's yeah, stay there. Right, right. Yeah. 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 That goes along with it. It goes along with it. Absolutely. Colossians 4. Look at Colossians 4. Look at verse 12. We're going to go back to 2 Timothy 2, but based on what Dennis was just saying, I want to get to this point because I just started the scripture. Now, Colossians 2.10 tells us, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Right? So if we're complete in him, watch this now. Now, go to Colossians 4, look at verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand what? Perfect. And what? And all the will of God. who? God. Now, in Colossians 2.10, it says we're already what? Complete. Complete. Right? Let's go to 2.10. Let's read this. Colossians 2.10. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, him being Christ, which means once we accept Christ, meaning that we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, him shedding his blood for the payment of our sins, once we believe that, we become in Christ. When we're in Christ, we're what? Complete. But... Colossians 4 now, verse 12, says that he's laboring fervently you in prayers, Epaphras, that ye may stand what? Perfect and complete in all the will of God. Well, how, how does that make sense if we're already complete? Why would he be praying that we stand perfect and complete if we're already that? Right? Notice the key word here. He says we, he's praying that we what? Stand perfect, Okay. There's a, there's a standing with God, practical standing, and a practical sanctification, okay? So there's a positional and a practical, all right? Our state is different than our standing, all right? A state, our state of being is in Christ, but our standing is based on how we walk. You see that? So now, that's why there's a practical side of the sanctification, which means that we don't all make the personal choice to honor God in the way we live. We should, because our lives should reflect no longer our selfish, selfishness of the flesh, but it, it should reflect the one who died to save us. You see that? Because if I'm complete in him, then my walk should be in gratitude of what he's already done. Right, but the only way to go about doing that and be me, all right, let's go to, uh, go back to 2 Timothy real quick. Yeah, 221. So the only way for us to be worthy, okay, or, or, or to walk according to the will of God in which we are already complete is by way of standing perfect, which means the only way to do that because what is the only thing that pleases God? What is the only thing that pleases God? Faith. 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 All right, and faith coming by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word. the word of God. So the only way that we can stand perfect is we have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. But when you go to church or you go to Bible study, the thing that's lacking in church is the Bible. Right? And you have people that are standing up here where I'm at and they'll give you a commentary of what they believe it to say, which there's no power in that. The power comes from the word of God. Okay, so if I stand up here, I can could, I could make a lot of stuff sound good. I do motivational speaking all the time. I can make it sound good, but it, it has no real what? Power. That's why Paul said in 2 Timothy that there are uh, 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 some having the, uh, 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 having a form of godliness, but they deny what? The power thereof. See, that there are a lot of people that have the form of God. It looks like God. But he's nowhere in the equation. There's no power there. You see that? That's why when you go to church, all right, and you get emotional and you see, they're, oh, ooh, I'm crying out to God and we run around and dance and we're shouting and all of this, right? There's no real substance there. That's just emotion. Because as soon as you get another emotion, like say when you get in the parking lot and somebody, you know, bumps your car and messes your car up or step on your shoe, now there's a different emotion that's going to come. You see that? And if there's no real substance, that emotion is now going to take over. See, because when you're in church and they got the, the organ ghost going, 
all right, and you want to move and dance and do all of that, there's no substance there. The only real substance comes from what? The word of God. All right? So when you go to church and they tell you, to, all right, we're going to read this verse, they come up with a title, all right, now close your Bible. Church at that point is over because anything that I say does not compare to the word of God. So that's why you, when we have Bible study, the whole point of it is what? The Bible. That's why we go from verse to verse and we go through the verses and allow God to speak for himself. All right? Oh, I, was, I was just thinking about my grandma and how years, years, years ago, it's like she would have been in the church where we've been around the Sanctified or holiness, what you mm -hmm. want to call it. It was like they, that. The, what you express and explain, it's like they got it flip flop. Right. Like they try to do to be sanctified, live sanctified, mm -hmm. but they they're not placing their faith in their complete sanctification. Right, right. Uh -huh. And so they keep trying. Try, right. You know, to, to uh, attain. This mm -hmm. sanctification by their behavior, right. how they live. Right. So And it'll never happen because again, and they do this by trying to keep the law. Now remember, what is the knowledge of sin or the strength of sin? What gives sin its strength? Oh, the, law. the law. So every time people are trying to sanctify themselves by keeping the law, excuse me, what you're doing. It's going further away from God because the not, sin was only the, the law was only given to point out sin. Paul says, I would not have known sin unless it was by the law. Right? If you go down this street in a car, right, and you know nothing about speed limits or anything like that, you're only going to be made aware of how fast you're going when you see a speed limit sign. Even when you're driving now, we, we all know that there's speed limit signs on every road we get on. But we don't even pay attention to the, to the speedometer or how fast we're going until when. We either see a police officer or we see a speed limit sign. It's just, that's the law. You only know that you're sinning when you're trying to, when you look at the law. Because that's God's perfect uh, standard. All right? Which now, God understands that no man can keep it. That's why he's offering us his grace. All right? And so understand, when we do these things, okay, our sanctification is based on who we are in Christ. So the more we know about him, the more we have his mind, then the more way we can behave accordingly. All right? Oh, I'm waiting for the end of... Uh, okay, we're going to get there now. All right, yeah. Look I at this. 2 Timothy 2, 21. Look at this. Preparing every good work. Yep. Now, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every what? Good work. Good work. See, we're prepared unto every what? Good work. Which means the good works are what? Created in us. Watch this. Go to uh, 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 Ephesians, Ephesians 3. Yeah, Ephesians. go to Ephesians 3. There you go, Dennis. Look at Ephesians 3. I'm sorry, Ephesians 2. Look at verse 8. We'll get the 10 is what we want, but let, let's look at verse 8. Watch this. Because justification is not the same as sanctification, which is what Christendom gets mixed up. All right? Because they say, oh, salvation is a process. No, salvation is not a process. Salvation was already completed. That was the process on the cross. All right? Salvation for us is a free gift. All right? And we're saved by grace through faith by believing the process that was already happened on the cross. Now, Justification, once we're justified, justified means to be declared righteous before God. Once we're justified, now the sanctification, right, is different. Because although we don't walk right, which we should, we're still in the same, what, house. Because remember, there are vessels to honor and some to dishonor. All right? Look at Ephesians 2.8. For by grace are ye saved through what? Faith. Faith. And that not of yourselves it is the what? Yeah. Gift of God. Look at verse 9. It's not of what? Works, lest any man should what? Boast. Boast. That's who we are in the flesh. We compare ourselves to other people. And we boast in the fact that I can be better than you at something. We're naturally like that. Right? What, we, what, what people call competition is really boasting. That's, what, that's who we are. We're designed to compete. Okay? 
All right, and so when we compete, we're, what we're really doing is boasting. And when it comes to spiritual things, people even in the church boast as if they're doing something better than you to, uh, to, to gain this relationship with God. Right. They make it seem as though, oh, brother, you missed church for two months. <laughs> I've, been here for, I've been here for the last two months. Every, every time the door opens, that doesn't make you a bit more saved than me. But they glory in these things because they glory in the what? In the flesh. We don't glory in the flesh. You see that? And so what they do is they glory in your flesh, not understanding that your salvation is not based on what you do or don't do in the flesh. Salvation is based on what he did on the cross. For we are his workmanship. But there we go. Here we go. Verse 10. Verse 10. All right. Because remember now, in the great big house, 2 Timothy 2, if we purge ourselves from these, we become vessels unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every what? Good work. Look at verse 10 here, Ephesians 2. For we are his workmanship created in what? Christ Jesus. Unto what? Good work. So unless we purge ourselves, right, and let, allow Christ to live in us, which is how God creates in us the good works, we can't do good works in the sight of God. Because the good works that have to be prepared, right? Notice in 2 Timothy 2.21, the good works that are prepared unto us, we can now do because now we're meet for the master's use, right? Why? Because the master has designed and ordained that we he going to create in us the good works. Mm -hmm. And again, in Christendom, that's why the Christians are some of the worst people you'll ever meet. You, can, you, I met, you meet Muslims, Jehovah's Witnesses, they're the nicest people you'll meet. Christians, why? Because there's no real change of mind with Christians. They go to church, there's no real, there's no real substance, right? And all they get is a bunch of candy. Right? You know, when you're a kid, you don't want the real food that's gonna help you grow and the nutrients and all of that. You just want what? Junk food. But then there's no substance. Then as when a kid eats a bunch of junk food, then what happens? Then they get sick. Now the remedy to the sickness is you have to take the kid where? To the doctor. Now, the doctor is going to just prescribe to you a medicine, all right, that's going to allow you to defeat that what? Sickness. Okay, now, let's use the same natural example, but use it spiritually. When you go to church, all right, and the pastor does not edify you based on the word of God, what you're giving is a bunch of candy. And then what happens? You get sick. So now what you have to do every week is you come back to church, which should be the doctor. The word of God is your doctor. All right. Now, the pastor should prescribe you the medicine for your sickness, which should be what? The word of God. Right. And what now, once you get the word of God, it defeats your sickness. Not that you won't get sick, but the fact that you have strength and peace and comfort even through your sickness. The same way. But when the pastors don't preach the word of God or the medicine in which we need, okay, as being sick sinners of this world, you need the medicine, which is the word. When a pastor doesn't preach it, all you get is candy. That's why so many people in the church are sick, spiritually speaking. Spiritually sick, spiritually dead. Revolving door. Revolving door, right? Revolving door. Giving them candy for the prescription. Giving them candy for the prescription. Right, and so what happens is they go out. Um, I'm emotionally excited now. Oh, I got the word. Well, what did he talk about? I don't know. I'm just excited. Well, what happens now when you go the next day and lose your job? Are you still just as excited? No, you're not going to be as excited about that. Now your emotions change because your circumstance changes. But with God, we're always to have joy and at an even keel. Why? Because even when the worst things happen to me in this life, He'll never leave me nor forsake me. You see that? That's the hope that we have, okay? Because we're created in righteousness. Go to Ephesians 4. Before we leave this verse. Uh-huh. But which one? 2.21. Okay. Let me read this to finish 2.10. Okay. Unto good works which God had before ordained that we should what? Walk in them. See, God has created in us good works, but it's in who? Christ. So the more we study, the more we have the what? Mind of Christ, the more we can do the good work. All right? Go ahead. Like we start off with 21, say, if a man therefore purge himself of these, and mm -hmm. we're talking about inequities, like in 22 where it takes you to <coughs> from 
youthful love, yep. follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. Yep. And then you also go back to uh, 15 where it says that it show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to make sure is it says, and prepare unto good works. Right. So I'm trying to show you that you can't do good works. I remember how we were talking about Oprah. Right, right, uh, right. Oprah does good works by giving away cars, but those are not good works. Right, right, right. right. Uh -huh. God. Right. Not in the sight of God. And because the good works have to be what? Prepared Parity. in us. Right, which which that's God's plan all along. Once we become members of His body, all right, and we have a transformed and renewed mind, then right, He's going to act in us. Because remember Philippians two thirteen, for it is God which worketh in us to do of His will and of His good pleasure. That's the whole point. God created man to bring glory to His name. That's what right. So He's ordained the good works in us so that we can walk as light among the darkness. In order to bring glory to God's name. So that's why I was trying to make sure that it was tweaked about the good works. Because right. We see that word good work. You have people doing good works all the, all the time. All the time. I feed people. Right? right, right, right. But it's not just doing good work. It's good work supposed to being purged and doing the will of Christ. Right. There you go. Right. That's because good Because to give somebody food and not give them the gospel is really doing them a disservice. Right. You see that? To give them food, and you should give them, before you go to talk to anybody about God and they're starving, you best feed them first. Because otherwise they're not going to hear nothing you got to say. All right? But understand, if you just give them food, you're only satisfying their natural man. So man You've does, done nothing for their spiritual man. Man does not live by bread alone. Right, right. <laughs> but of every word. So, now, so the goal and the ob object of charity is not just to feed the homeless. But it's to feed their soul as well, right? Because really, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his what? Lose his soul. So the hungry man that's had nothing to eat in a week, all right, the whole world to him is a, is a, is a cheeseburger. You see what I mean? So what does it profit you to give him and not uh, have him to be hungry anymore, but you leave his soul still hungry? And we look at good works wrong anyway. Right. Because, like, brother, uh, uh, Willie was, Billy was saying that we're looking at, oh, I fed somebody, I did, you know, mm -hmm. or I picked somebody up and took them to church. Or, which, is, which, which is, which are good things to do for good people. things to do. Right. But, but as it pertains to a closer relationship to God, that has nothing to do with nothing. And, and what I'm saying is that the good works are created in you. Mm -hmm. And when God, when Jesus, I, I feel like when we, well, that, that's not good to say, but uh, but my understanding is that mm -hmm. like with the good works come through Christ, mm -hmm. through you, right? And it brings somebody to Christ. Uh -huh. it, it, uh, brings that's the ultimate good work. That's, that's the ultimate good work. work. Yeah. Right. That's the ultimate good work because if your good work leads them to Christ, that is the ultimate good work because and that's charity. That's charity. You know, show him. Right. You are. Acting as Christ would right. in that situation. Right, because Rather whenever than, whenever Christ right, whenever Christ did something, even in this earthly ministry, it was always for a purpose. For a purpose. The purpose that he loved those and he came into the world to save those to save sinners. So when he did something, it was a purpose to, for doing it. All right, our purpose should be to bring people to Christ. All right, we don't want to but, just feed somebody and just leave them. That's and it. All that good, you know, it's good to be kind. It, don't right. get it it's, mixed up with. It's that. nice to be nice. Yeah. Absolutely, we should always do that. It's nice to be nice, mm -hmm. all right. but understand, there's another element of who we are spiritually. Don't just take care of somebody's natural and leave them still naked spiritually. Planting and watering. Right. Planting, Planting and watering. Water the word. Yep. yep. Planting the word. And I guess yep. watering the word pops up. That's right. It's like right. giving a man on the corner a quarter. When you should be giving a quarter and telling God loves you. Right, 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 right. And, and, and understand there's a, uh, uh, there's a time because uh, Paul Ephesians 5, 16 says we're to redeem the time where the days are evil. Mm -hmm. All right, so redeeming that time is not just because, again, once this life is over, there's another life to be lived, which is eternity. All right, and so just to feed somebody for the time being in this life is really not benefiting them for eternity's sake. It's benefiting them at the time for the time being, all right. But that's why it says we're to redeem the time, but the days are evil. And I think a lot of it has to do with the lack of knowledge, understanding, yeah, yeah, of God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because 
when people see me, of course, you know, they always say, man, I, I, I always give money to homeless people. You think God pleased with that? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I don't answer because I don't really know how to, you know, to, to, yeah. to respond. But, you know, I, I just hear all these different things because of, you know, the environment that I stay in and, you know, the people mm-hmm. I'm still friends right, with. Right. And a lot of it has to do with the lack of knowledge, of right. really understanding what it means to to, to, to please God. To please God. And, and again, everybody, if not everybody, most people have a concept of God. Whether right or wrong, they have a concept of God. All right? And now, the problem is not with people's zeal or concept. It's just that it's not according to knowledge. Okay? All right? So what happens is, it may sound cruel, but understand this. Is God pleasing me giving money to this homeless guy? Does God, is, God to be, is God really concerned about that? No. Because what pleases God? What is the only thing that pleases him? Faith. Faith. So you just giving money to the homeless outside of faith. Why is God pleased with that? I mean, what what does that do? I try not to like this, you know. Yeah, right, and depending know, on who you're like talking to, right, right. right. Old depending on who you're talking yeah. to, and the audience, yeah. it may not be beneficial to say that because again, their concept of God is going to be thrown off if you say that yeah. because most people think that God honors good things or good works. Which means that if I, you know, walk an old lady across the street, oh, God is pleased with me. God being pleased or displeased with you, okay, really is not the focal point to the degree when it comes to salvation. All right, you're, you're talking about is God pleased with me helping an old lady across the street. What about is he pleased as far as you going to heaven or hell? That's the biggest question. All right, so, yeah, so you don't want to, you know, destroy somebody by destroying their concept of God. You want to try to steer them in the right direction because in actuality, is God pleased with somebody giving money to the homeless? The only thing that pleases God is faith. And faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. So when you're planting, you're supposed to plant the word of God. There you go. And I was wondering, watering is that that's also the word? Right, right. Because uh, go back to the lady, I'll give you I'll give you water you'll never thirst. Never thirst again. Oh, that's right. his word. That's his word. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, um, I, I mean, not to say the name, but you know, the famous African American male with the radio station. That as he in my house, well, you know, when my family, my mom and then my I struggle with that. Because, yeah. You know, because he's supposed to do good things and then he used the Bible. Yeah. I don't know, I don't listen to your radio station, but supposedly he used the word and oh he's a man of God and look at all the things he's doing, all the money and stuff he's making and people concept is right. like those idols who are placed on that platform right, and man, right. that burns me the most. Yeah, and yeah. I like because like people that equal, burns me. People I, I don't say anything because I know they don't know this. So right, right. me saying that, oh man, you a hater, you think he's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I got in that before, you yeah. know, about three or four years ago. But I've grown and say, it just, it just, it just has to be right timing. Cause yeah. See, because pe- uh, again, people's concept of God. Because people treat God, they equate God and the blessings of God with tangible things, right. which means if I'm rich and I talk about God, that must mean I'm really doing the right things because look how God has blessed me. So I'm but, looking at that Santa Claus. You said yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Because I, I even when I played in the NFL, we had atheists that had million dollar contracts. Mm-hmm. So they didn't believe in God, but they had talent and in the world in which we live to make a lot of money. So money is not, because again, God raised up the just as well as the unjust. So it doesn't mean that God is blessing or blessing you or this is God's anointed person just because you have a lot of money. That doesn't mean that, but but again, because of what society's concept of God is, we treat him like a genie. Once we rub him, he's gonna come out and do whatever we ask him to do. That's not the case because God is not concerned with how much money you have. Because you could be rich and gain the whole world, but still lose your soul. Why would God be? Why would God be pleased with that? You see that? So that that's not the case at all. Look at Ephesians four. Look at verse twenty four. And that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true what? Holiness. Holiness. It has to be created in you. You see that it's a personal choice to purge yourself 
of these particular things in your life in order to be used by God, to be sanctified, a vessel of honor. Right? That's what it's for. But you have to first be thus minded. Because if you are not have the mind of Christ, you cannot obtain these things in the flesh. Go back to Philippians 3. That works in the back. flesh too. Huh? Oh, no, I, I was just going to take it back off. What he was saying, uh, a lot of, most of it is just a lack of dispensational. Understand, you know, right? Right. And, right. Because they look at King David, King Solomon. Solomon. And yep. they look back there and they see how God did bless them materially. Yeah. But as it, it was a different type of dispensation, Station. he was showing people who he was, you know, and it was a different, you know, and so it's hard to. Now, but even that, even speaking on that, what did Solomon ask for? He could have had anything in the world. Do you think he asked for a bunch of money? He asked for wisdom, and God blessed him with the other things, right? See, people are trying to get all of it, obtain all of his wealth and forget about God. You see, that it doesn't work that way, all right? Because, again, you could obtain wealth in this world if you know how to do it. If you know how to make money in this life, you could obtain a lot of wealth. Plus, you're always saying this dispensation. What, what more can God do for you than the grace He's already done? Right. He's already done. What more can He do to you than give you eternal life as a free gift? That works. What more can He do? <laughs> that does work. For us. You see, works and so, for so, so again, but people look at it as though God, if you're doing, if you're giving houses in this season, don't forget about me. What? And then they stand up and prophesy. Yeah, I mean, what? But again, because of our, because of society's wrong concept of God, we treat God as though he's a genie. God is not concerned with blessing you with a big house. Because how, how does that bring glory to his name? There are people that don't believe in God that got big houses. See, what brings glory to his name is our walk as it pertains to our mind in Christ. Based on what we've studied in his word. You see that? That tells you that it's about the study. It's right, not right. People write this here for the longest at other churches. I ain't gonna say this, but it was always about that tenfold. You give this, and he'll bless you ten times. Right, right, and right. He'll give yeah. you, and then it was like the sheep. Oh well, everybody went back to the Old Testament where he gave somebody double of what he had. Right, and right. they always use that, and not knowing back now, now you know that it was for your learning purposes. Right. And it's not this civilization that you live in today. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. people still don't know that. And that's like you said, it bugs you now because we know. But remember, we was in that position too. Yeah. That's what I, I, I was know. more so talking about, you, you know, uh, he, he's not even a pastor, you know, you know. Yeah, I know exactly what, what you're about, talking about. Like, <laughs> you got Frank's this time of morning with other customers or family, then yeah, I guess at some part he uses the word yeah. and, and then the whole see but the whole but the majority of the African American race. But they know who you talking about. See, but but understand but understand this. You got rappers that make albums and the first thing they do is thank God. Now God ain't had nothing to do with that album. Absolutely nothing. Okay, with the content that's on that, God had nothing to do with that. Every athlete Okay, the first thing they do is get up and thank God. The quarterback from Alabama. Yeah, yeah. First, yeah, that's the first thing he did in the chapter. That's the first thing he did. Because it's a, it's become cliche to say, I thank God for... Uh, but and, and this is the difference, and I say this all the time. There's a difference between knowing God and knowing about him. See, most people don't actually know him. They just know about him. All right? I get this all the time because technically... Based on society, I'm considered to be famous, okay? So now, because of me playing the NFL. So now, when people, I get people that come up to me all the time that really don't know me. They just know about me. And there's a difference, okay? I was talking to one of my friends. His wife, and one of his wife, sister, went to school with me. Now, I don't know her, but she said she knew me. She didn't know that this is one of my best friends, so she's talking, trying to make herself look good. It was like, oh, I know such and such. I went to school with him. And he was like, oh, you know, you know Kay? And she was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I know him. And he was like, oh, that's my homeboy. She's like, oh, I don't really know him. 
Uh -huh. I don't really know him. So, so again, people don't really know God. They just know about him. See, there's a difference between knowing him. That's why Paul said in Philippians 3, I want to know the power of his resurrection, the excellency and the knowledge of, of Christ. Right? He, and after, this is after 30 years of preaching. Paul still wanted to know him. See, there's a, there's a difference when you have a personal knowledge of who Christ is as opposed to just hearing about him because you grew up in church. There's a difference, okay? And so, th and that's usually what happens. Most people know about him, so they everything they do, and we ought to give thanks in all things because that's what the Bible tells us. All right? However, most people don't take the time other than the spotlight they have for those few seconds to thank God. Most people don't give the time of day to God, right? Because what pleases him? Faith. faith. Where does faith come from? Hearing and hearing what? By the word of God. Most people don't study their Bible. None of that stuff can be seen. None of that can, most people don't study their Bible. That's why when you talk to somebody about the Bible, that's when you that's when they get the angriest. How is it that you can talk to people about the Bible and they get angry? People who claim to know God, to love God, and to love his word, they get angry when you bring up the Bible. You always got to bring up the Bible. Well, what else is there to bring up if we're discussing God? What else is there to bring up? Could I ask some members a question? Go ahead. How did we get here? Was it because we didn't get enough, or did somebody lead us here? And here, as in what? As in the grace. Uh -huh. As God in the grace. Because, because, you know, I could be perfectly content over at the uh, Kajik uh, at the Baptist, uh -huh. but it was something missing. Right. Truth. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. Started. You go up in this place, that place, and, and you like, hold on, man. This ain't something about this ain't right. You may not know yeah. the exact that, answer to it. Yeah. But after a while, it's like something, you know, something missing. Like every right. every new year, you telling me that this is the year that yeah. God is going yeah. to really do this. I'm like, man, I heard that in 14. Yeah. I don't know that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it but you hear it all the yeah, time. Like, I'm hearing this all the time, and, and plus I was just fed up because I'm like I'm not used to being around stuff when it's not real, you know. And, yeah. I, and like I say, so I, I know me personally. I got it because Rhea can trust her. And we was at the football game, and he was like, "Man, that same way you feel." I'm telling you. So I, I tuned in right, like right. that. But, but yeah, and again, there's a lot of people that that it, it, the feel is off. You don't yeah. quite know what it is. But if you're seeking truth. You get to, you, God will will answer you in that regard. Trust me, I was in the church for a long time, but it didn't feel right. Something didn't feel right. right Something right. was like, well, how come he gets to do this? Right, right. And I know that everybody in here is a sinner. How come he ain't considered a sinner because right. he's wearing that little robe? Right, right, right. And that bugged me more than right. that. Right, you know, right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Um, no, I was just piggybacking off of what your wife said about. The quarterback. Yeah. See, I'm learning that you don't you don't know. Right, right. So he could be he could be really he could be. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I it's cliche. It yeah. yeah, it might be cliche, whatever. Yeah. First thing a person says, whatnot. But yeah. same time, I'm learning as far as myself is that you really have to just do you right, right, right. in this walk of life and right. and learning God and having God fearing people around you? Yeah, yeah. Because people gonna talk about you and put you down and put right. you through the put you through everything and have their own predictions of what happened. Right, right, right. But if you let that bother you in your your journey, right, right, then you'll never focus on prize of what's going on. Right, right. And you know, you know, we was talking of what happened today and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want to be looked at as oh man, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. This happened to such and such. Yeah. But at the same time, you really have to just trust and believe. And it's like just like you said, the older you're getting, mm -hmm. you're gonna make mistakes, but you become more wiser. Right, right. And you start to really look at things at a different pace. So I understand where it is. You just have to just, um, you have to just go by what you feel and go by what's right 
Right. Not saying according to you, but according to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But people are always going to question certain things that you do. Right. And if it's the right way, then God is going to let things mm-hmm. um, grow mm-hmm. and, to prosper mm-hmm. and prosper in the proper way. So mm-hmm. I understand where y'all are coming from yeah, with yeah. you know doing things. In the right, 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 in the right manner, and, and the and the right way to do it is in Christ, because again, that's what sets us apart, right? Because again, what is the difference in me going to work, providing for my family, than a person who's not saved? There's no significant difference there. We, there's unsaved people who are married for thirty some years. Mm-hmm. There are unsaved people who do a lot of things that saved people do. But the only thing that sanctifies us or sets us apart is based on who we are what? In Christ. You see that? Because, again, that is the only thing that's going to last. All right? A big house. Ah, Thank you. Excuse me. You can't take that with you. All these material things that people uh, uh, say this is what God has blessed me with, you can't take that with you. God has already blessed us, Ephesians 1 and 3, with all what? Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You see that? For God to bless you with something, it, that, it shouldn't be a debt to you. To get a new car, a new house that you have a mortgage or car loan on, that's a debt. God is not blessing you with debt. But people say it because it's cliche. All right? But not knowing that really God is not concerned with the material wealth. Right? He's concerned with what? His word and how it transforms our thinking. All right? And then we make the choice to purge ourselves or change the behavior, right, based on how we think. Because your mind is the central processing unit, like, like it is like a computer, like with a computer, right? Your mind controls your actions, your thought, all that it controls what you do. All right? And if you're studying to show yourself approved, your mind now becomes the mind of Christ. And now if Christ is the head and we're his body, we'll follow as he wants us to follow. You see that? And all of that comes from uh, uh, us having the mind of Christ pressing toward the mark, being thus minded and not being otherwise minded, which means uh, uh, more concerned about the things on this earth. And again, I'm not talking about walking out here and not being uh, 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 cognizant of what's going on now. All right, don't don't be ignorant of uh, you know you don't just be out here doing stuff and you you know there's danger coming to you because you don't you you said i'm just gonna walk and follow god uh you walking in that street and get hit by a bus okay you need to understand what's going on around you but at the same time not entangle yourself or the things of this world should not be more of a concern to you than god's word yeah i was i was gonna go back and say something about him when we talk about the quarterback god is the only one who knows the heart right right but look at the group of us could you imagine us sitting in somebody's church? Like we dress now. Look at us. When you go to church, I used to have to put on a tie. Yeah. I can't go in there without no yeah. fit size shoe yeah. with a coat on. It ain't about that no more. That's yeah. why it took me a long time to figure it out. It ain't about nobody but Christ. Right. It ain't about me no more. It's yeah. about him. Right, right. So I look at myself. I John the Baptist be hooking me up in his mind and yeah. my mind said, why? Look how he dressed and look how he looked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why should your, I better not have a coming here on, on a certain Sunday without white on. Yeah, uh, yeah. And all of those, the legalistic things yeah. that again, that get, now, and again, that sanctifies people because it sets you apart. Just not, that has nothing to do with holiness though. You see that? Because those are legalistic things. Whether you wear white, black, whether you wear a t-shirt, t- God don't really care about any of that. I tell you all the time, there's some days I really just want to come in here, especially the days that I'm off and I come from home. I really just want to come in some basketball shorts. That's what I wear all day, some basketball shorts. and uh, But it might offend somebody else. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's I not, don't do that. But again, bad. if I did do that, as long as I'm teaching the word, what difference does that make? Yeah. You see that? So, so, but, but, but again, those are things that it don't, you know, because certain churches have doctrines to where you can't wear Women can't wear earrings, and those, that sets them apart because they're the only women that don't do that. You know, most women wear earrings, all right, and, and, and jewelry. So, so understand it, it. It's a it's a set apart, but it's not according to God, because our sanctification is according to the God, according to God, uh, the God of the Bible. 
All right, and so what we, when we become sanctified, we do things because we have the mind of Christ, it's not mind. because of some man-made doctrine. All right, so what sets us apart all right, is the mind of is having the mind of Christ and doing things the way God would want have us to do them. All right, uh, look well, at I'm, I'm glad the quarterback said that. I, I'd much rather have him said than anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, and again, the reason I think Susan brought that up, and the reason we're even talking about that, is to say that now most people always talk about God, and they have a yeah, concept of God. Most people do, all right? and if he has a relation with God, that's perfectly fine. I was, I wasn't bringing that up, and I know she wasn't bringing it up to demean him. Right. But the point is, most people always say that. Well, time will tell. I think he's going to be just like Tebow. Everybody will know. What well, I was saying it's Alabama won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. That was a right. rap. So that right, right, right. right. <laughs> but, 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 but understand, when most people, that's what the Bible talks about. Paul says people have a form of godliness, but they deny the power oh, thereof. God. And again, you won't know unless you actually talk to somebody about the Bible. Because when people talk, you can tell where people are in their faith based on what they say. All right? When you talk to people and they don't know the word, but they talk about God, then you understand that they have a form, but it's not. It's denying the power. Because the true power of God relies uh, lies in his word. And if you don't know his word, you have no power to defeat the enemy. When Jesus was tempted of the devil, how did he defeat him? With the word. With the word. You see that? So the only way to defeat the devil is with the word. So if you don't have the word, you have no true power, right? And when you don't have no true power, there's no real sanctification. There's no set apartness in you, all right? Because now the devil is taking you captive at his will because you have nothing to defeat him with, right? Ephesians 6 talks about us putting on the whole armor of God. When we think about armor, what do we, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Fighting. Huh? Fighting. War. What, what else? What comes when you think about armor? Protecting Protection, yeah, safety, right? Normal. So now, when it comes to the armor of God, protection, fighting, war, right? But guess what? You have a bunch of defensive weapons, the breastplate of righteousness, yourself. the shield of faith. But there's only one offensive weapon, and that's what? The sword of the, the, sword word. Of the word. So how are we fighting the enemy, but we don't have a sword? We have no other offensive weapon. So when we put on the whole armor of God, the only thing that we can fight with is the word. But yet when we go to church, Bible study, there's no studying of the Bible in most churches nowadays. There's just a bunch of, uh, uh, I believe it to say this, or there's a bunch of emotion. But the only thing that really is going to be substance for us and that builds up our inner man all right, is the word. The flesh is is dying day by day, as our inner man should be re being renewed day by day. Would it be right to say that Jesus defended himself with the word as it pertained to him during his dispensation? I believe absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and the the point there is the word, okay? Because yeah, understand, the word, the word. there's a word of truth even here. The whole word of God is the word of truth. Right. But it's a dangerous thing to use the right word of God in the wrong dispensation. Right. Right. And that's what you're getting at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So 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 understand we when we when we talk about this, just to sum it up here, verse 15, let us therefore, Philippians 3 15, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Okay. How what is he going to reveal to you? He's going to reveal his word to those of them that believe. How? Excuse me, by being what? Thus minded. You see that? That's how he's going to do it, okay? And verse 16, we'll get into this on Sunday. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the what? Same, same thing. thing. See that? Same thing. All right? All right, so again, we'll pick this up on uh, Sunday. We'll pick this up on Sunday. Uh, but it's a good good lesson and a good study, uh, uh, understanding that we have a choice in the matter of how people view us. All right. Now, this scripture says, for all of the for those of us who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer what persecution. persecution. All right. So people are going to persecute us in spite of. All right. But for the most part, our lives ought to reflect 
who we are in Christ and our relationship with him, which is, should be based on what? The word, not based on an emotional feeling. All right, because again, feelings and emotions change at the drop of a dime. All right, because again, I could love my wife right now, all right, but when she don't, when she does something to upset me, I love her, but I don't want to talk right now. So those feelings change at the drop of a dime. All right, but understand when it comes to true head knowledge, that doesn't change. Uh, even when growing up playing football, people always say, you know, get your education because the mind they can't take from you. They can take football away, but your mind, which is the, which was a true statement, they could take football away from you, but your mind they can't take it. You see that? So the knowledge that we have in Christ, all right, that is what gives us a relationship with Him, not an emotional feeling, which is going to change the minute we get ourselves in trouble. All right, there's a song, that, uh, a gospel song, that it talks about uh, uh, you only call at midnight. And the base of the song is talking about how we only call and pray to God when things go bad at, at midnight, in the middle of the night. That's the only time we want to speak to God is when things go bad. All right? But understand, we, because we know him, we can talk to him because we should pray without ceasing. As the Bible says, okay? So we, we can know him because we know his word. We can have an intimate fellowship with him because of his word, all right? But again, if we don't study it, we have no power, all right? All right, uh-uh. Next on that, let's just say the, the first thing that Paul Because now the Holy Ghost is what teaches you His Word. Okay. Otherwise, it'll be gobbledygook. Right, right, right. Because understand, there's no uh, spiritual discernment without God's Spirit. See that you can't spiritually discern the Word uh, without His Spirit. Uh, so salvation is the key uh, to receiving His Spirit, by which we can begin to study to show ourselves approved. Absolutely. All right. Uh, all minds and hearts clear. Again, thank you for our brother for coming out with us tonight. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Uh, uh, hopefully you'll come back. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Uh, uh, you'll come back to, to, to visit us. Uh, but again, we thank God for all of you that are here. And again, we'll uh, uh, meet back up on Sunday morning. Uh, and also, we're going to have the uh, Friends and Family Day. Uh, uh, I guess we settled for March 4th. March 4th. Yeah, so that's when we're going to have our Friends and Family Day. will be Sunday, March 4th. All right. Uh, and so we'll hear more about that when we talk about it on Sunday. All right, nothing else? All minds and hearts clear? All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. Uh, we just thank you for your love and your kindness. Father God, we thank you for your word, the completion of your word, uh, that we may study it out to show ourselves approved unto you. Uh, Father God, we thank you for the approval uh, as we uh, study the word uh, and rightly divide your word and become workmen of the word so that we not be ashamed. Uh, we ask right now, help us not to... Uh, get all, get puffed up in the flesh, O oh God, based on what we know, because we know that knowledge puffeth up. Uh, but help us to be humble before you, O oh God. Help us to present our bodies uh, as a living sacrifice, which should be our reasonable service. Uh, we ask right now that you help us to put off the old man and we put on the new man, uh, which after God is created in true righteousness and holiness. Uh, we thank you right now. Father God, we ask that you continue to uh, strengthen us and build us up in our inner man, O oh God, that we may walk according to your will. Uh, help us not to conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Uh, and that's a constant process, O oh God, as we can journey through this life, O oh God. Uh, help us to uh, continue to not just go through life, but as we grow, uh, as we study your word, we may grow with you, Father God. Uh, help us right now to uh, present ourselves uh, as living vessels of honor. Uh, for those of us who we come in contact with every day, for your word says we ought to maintain good good works because it's profitable unto men. Uh, so as we live a life pleasing to you by faith, men see us by sight, O oh God, and they may, they may be drawn into you so that we can help them to see, make them to see what the fellowship of, the, of this mystery is. Uh, we ask right now that you continue to uh, touch this ministry as we go forth with word, truth, deed, and in doctrine. Uh, touch those who are lost in this world in denomination and religion. Uh, help them to find your grace. Help the scales to fall from their eyes, uh, that they may find the grace of God that has appeared to all men. Uh, we thank you for that now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
like me, got a whole. There you go. <laughs>